In this video, I want to step you through the five things to consider before purchasing a tent. If you're new to camping, these are some things you might not have considered before, and that's okay. Hey, it's Alicia Bratt here from A Brat Outdoors. I've dedicated this channel to helping campers or aspiring outdoorsmen and women be comfortable outside. If you're new here, be sure to click the subscribe button. Everything I mentioned in this video, I'll place the links in the description below. The most important part of the essential camping gear list is your shelter system. The primary job of your shelter is to keep you dry during precipitation, provide you with some privacy, and most importantly for me, keep the bugs out of your tent. If you're a beginner, I strongly recommend that you select a tent as your first shelter system. Why? Because tents are easy to set up and very affordable. There's a whole bunch of tents out there. There's cabin style tents, there's pop-up tents, there's backpacking tents, there's tarps, there's bivvies, there's rooftop tents, there's shrimp gumbo, there's shrimp kebabs. Mostly you just need to know that tents are easy. Now we're gonna take a look at the five things to consider when you're selecting your tent. What type of tent should you select. These days, tents are very easy to set up, especially if you select a dome style tent. A dome style tent typically has two, maybe three poles and you're done. Pop-up tents are all the rage, but honestly, I think they're a little expensive right now as well as heavy and I don't like carrying heavy shit. Number two, what size tent? If you are solo camping, I recommend you get a two person tent. If you're a family of four, I recommend getting a six to eight person tent. Tents are typically sized based on shoulder to shoulder sleeping. Most of us don't wanna be shoulder to shoulder. Big spoon, little spoon, eh. Maybe it's nice with your significant other or a spouse. Mm -mm. I really would prefer a little bit of room around me, which is why I recommend upsizing the size tent you need. Maybe you're a large person. Maybe you roll around a lot. Maybe you're used to sprawling out on a queen size bed all by yourself. Maybe you can't solo and you just want your gear inside your tent with you. If you're using a cot or an air mattress, make sure to check that your tent is at least six inches larger than the dimensions of the bed you're choosing. The last thing you want is a tent wall leaning over and touching your air mattress or bed because anything that touches the side of your tent will ultimately get wet due to condensation. It doesn't even have to be raining outside. Number three, don't forget to check the peak height of your tent. There are very tall tents available. For those of you that prefer to stand up in your tent, maybe you're changing clothes, maybe you're having a dance party, maybe you just like standing. I can tell you in my tent, it's not very tall. So I have to sit completely down, put my top clothes on, maybe put my bottom clothes on while sitting and then shuffle to my knees while bending over. Not ideal. A double thick air mattress puts you significantly closer to the ceiling height of your tent than let's say just a regular single camping pad. So plan accordingly. Whatever your needs are, just be sure to double check the peak height of your tent before making that purchase. Consideration number four. Should you get a three season or four season tent? Hands down, three season tent. Something to consider. A lot of tents these days are made mostly of the noceum mesh, which is really great for stargazing at night, airflow through your tent in the summer, during hot days, maybe you're trying to take an afternoon nap. Maybe it's the middle of summer and it's 85 degrees overnight and you want every ounce of air to get through your tent as possible. However, during winter temperatures, an all mesh tent will equal more heat loss. So you'll wanna be sure to use the rain fly. Just know that the rain fly on top of those all mesh tents usually prevents you from having a window out. So maybe you'd prefer a three season tent that has more ripstock nylon outer tent fabric. That way you can unzip a window when you need to, have some privacy, have some air, but be able to zip it back up without completely locking yourself into a tent. For me personally, I like all mesh tents. I seem to be able to find privacy when I need it or I don't care. If I have to change my clothes, so be it. We're all humans. Consideration number five, tent accessories. You need to get a ground cloth. What's a ground cloth? A ground cloth is usually something like a tarp or a piece of Tyvex that goes underneath your tent. Ground cloths help protect the bottom of your tent. 
especially if you have pets or you keep running in and out of your tent, the eventual wear and tear on your tent floor may take its toll, especially on cheaper tents, but we don't really care about that. I say use the shit out of your tent because that's what tents are supposed to be made for. Be sure to bring a mallet or a hammer and make sure your tent comes with enough stakes to properly set it to the ground. Wind is a big deal here in Oklahoma, so I always, 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 always recommend setting your tent down with stakes. I've actually gotten in the habit of just using a rock or stepping on the tent stakes until they slide into the ground. It's not always convenient. Very often the ground is hard and dry here, so I'm always wishing I had a mallet, but I don't really care if I'm hitting a stake with a rock or a hammer, so whatever. Sometimes I bring a small dustpan and a little broom. The inside of your tent can get very dirty after a couple days of tent camping. Other times I just use a bandana to sweep my tent out. On short trips, I don't even worry about bringing one. At the end of the trip, I usually just turn my tent upside down and shake it. A fun tent accessory to bring is a stylish rug. I find it helps reduce the amount of dirt that actually gets in your tent and is a reminder to take off your shoes before you set up shop inside. Decorations! I rarely bring tent decorations anymore, but I think it's very important for beginners to feel comfortable and excited and proud of their tent setup. So whether it's a couple extra Christmas lights, maybe it's a snazzy blanket, just bring whatever makes you happy because being happy means you're gonna be comfortable. Bonus tip, be sure to set your tent up before you go out. What if it's missing a piece? What if it's broken? What if it tears? What if? Set it up in your living room, set it up in your backyard. Just set up your tent before you go anywhere. Stay tuned for the next video. I'll be doing a video on the essentials of camping, your sleep system. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. So don't look up. Nope. Nope. I don't want to do any of that. Fuck. What am I doing?